Hi guys! Today I'm just going to run you through a little tutorial on how we do our scallop detailing on our 3D models. So here's some examples of where we've used it before. So first up we're just going to start with a little sketch. It's going to be like half a cross section. Um, so just sketch that up. I tend to do like a funky little funnel shape. Um, not really by choice, that's just what I've tended to do the most where most of the scallop detailing is on the models I've done before. So I'm going to do a tutorial on this specific shape, but the, the idea is all the same regardless of what the shape is. So now we've got our, our sketch, we're going to go into the revolve tool. We're just going to select our profile and our center axis, and you just get your fully revolved body like this. So next up, just turn your sketch back on and jump into the form or the sculpt tool with Infusion. Um, we're going to start with creating a pipe. You're going to want to make sure that your chain selection is turned off. So you just select this smooth edge down the side here. So we're just going to beef this pipe up a little. We do want it to be quite chunky. It really is up to you and how your model is. You're going to want to turn on smooth edges and your square, square ends. And from here, it's a good idea now to turn your view, if you have it any different, to shaded with hidden edges. So this reveals all the edges of the faces that have been created in this pipe. Um, so this one does have quite a lot. That's not a terrible thing in most cases, but because we really need just a simple pipe here, what we're going to do is I'm just going to delete this one and make a new pipe with less. So same deal as before, go into the pipe tool, select your line and smooth faces, the square ends, and then we're just going to go in the segments tab and shrink that right down so there's only a couple of them. So as you can see here, uh, we've got this funky funnel shape, so it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom. So we're going to need to do the same thing with our funky little uh, pipe that we've got here. Because we have the square edges, it does round them off at the bottom. So just to make sure I don't get any funky artifacts at the bottom, I've just made that a bit bigger and I'm doing the same at the top. I'm just shuffling it up and out of the way. Now, because we want to make it wider at the top, you're just going to grab that circle in the center and pull outwards. So that particular tool means it's going to be resized uniformly around the whole object. When you get into the edges down the center, you're going to want to be double clicking each of your edges to make sure it's selecting all the edges around the body and not just the one you're clicking. This part may require some like additional fiddling. Um, I rarely get it right the first time. It's no biggie. You can just jump back into your body in the history down the bottom and edit it all you need down the line. So there we go. So we've got our funky little pipe. And this one is inset a bit too far into our main body. It'll trim it down quite a bit if we use it like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shuffle it outwards and do some fiddling and to make it suit how I want it to be in the end. So this one did turn out a little funkier than I intended originally. So as I said before, I just went back into my history in the form tool um, and did some more fiddling with the body to get it how I really wanted it to be. Okay, so we're just going to jimmy that one back in so it overlaps with the body. You do want it to have like a decent overlap with the main body because this is where your scallop shape will come from in the end. Okay. 
So once you're satisfied with the placement of your funky little pipe, what we're going to do next is we're going to open up the create bar and go into pattern and create a circle pattern. So from here, we're going to select our body and the original axes we used for the revolve. And then we're going to just shuffle up to the top. The default number of the circle tool is three, but for this one, we want to surround the whole thing. So I'm just going to throw 20 in there at first to see how it turns out. It will depend on the size of your pipe and the size of your initial body, how many you end up with. So this is what it looks like when you turn to the side or the front, whichever you'd rather. And now we're just going to use the combine tool, making sure that the operation is on cut and not combine itself. And you're going to select your funky funnel shape as the target body and all your pipes as your tool bodies. So as you go around the circle, you'll notice they turn red. That just means they're the material that's going to be cut away from the body that's highlighted in blue. So as you can see here, sometimes it does go a little funky if you don't have enough tool bodies to begin with. And that's what this funky little edge or little face is here. It just means there wasn't enough bodies to cut away completely around the outside. So what we're going to do is just going to go back into our history and our circle pattern and add a couple more in. So see, we still end up with the funky little face here. So just going to do some fiddling until that face is no longer there. It's not terrible, but it does mean down the line, if you want to be doing any filleting or chamfering to your edges in here, it'll get a bit messy. So we just want to make sure it's all uniform all the way down. So 28 seems to be on the money. But what we have here is that a combined tool only used the original bodies that we selected and we've just made a bunch more. So we need to go back into our history of our combine and just select all the additional tool bodies now as we did before and then hit the OK. And there we have it. So if you turn your view back to just shaded, you can see it a bit nicer. There's your lovely scallop detail for whatever you, t you intend to turn it into now.